Hello and welcome back to our RTS tutorial series. In this episode we're going to be setting up our alternative team, so the enemy team, and that we can attack and not select. So first of all we need to be having a way to determine what actors are, what units rather, are enemies and which ones are ours. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a decal that we've been using for selections and uh, use it for enemy uh, identification as well. So I'm going to go to my unit selection material for my decal and on here we're going to go to this decal here uh, color and on the color here we're going to change this to be a parameter so I'm going to right click on this and we're going to convert to parameter and we'll do decal color okay and hit apply so by default it'll pick the yellow one that we've been using I then want to make a instance of this, so create material instance, and there we have it. Now I'm going to go to my unit base. And on unit base, we're going to click on the decal, and we're going to change it over to use that instance version. That way, we can change the values on it freely. Okay, so speaking of changing the values, we need to know which uh, actor this belongs to, which if it's player controlled or AI controlled. So what I'm going to do is make a new variable here. And we're going to set this to is player controlled. Um, sorry, not play. Can't use that. Um, player unit. We'll call it. There you go. Uh, player unit. We'll make it editable, so we can change them. The ones that are in the world already, and we can hit compile. Okay. So next, we're going to go is to the construction script. On the construction script, we're going to drag out the player unit and get. And we put this into a branch. So we only want to do this if the player unit is not true. Uh, otherwise, everything will be left as default. So on player unit, we're going to just drag out here not and put that into the branch. And now, everything we do here will only apply to those who are not player units. So the first thing we do is we're going to take out our decal actor, and from there, we're going to get the material and change the parameter that's on there. So I need to get the dynamic material. So I need to create a dynamic material instance. And we'll promote this to a variable. Be handy. So decal material. And from there we're going to set a vector parameter value. Parameter name, we named it decal color. So I'm going to put decal color. And then the value, we're going to make that red. So the next one is to always be appearing. So in decal here, we're going to drag this out. And at the moment, by default, it's not visible. So I'm going to turn that to be visible. And tick. Okay, so now you should see that these are all enemy units because by default it's set to not be player controlled. Okay, but then if I click on one, I can change it down here to player unit and it will get rid of the decal because now it's a player unit. Next, I want to be able to make it so I can't select those that are enemy units. So let's go into that unit base and go to event graph. And I'm looking for the actor on clicked here so not only am I checking for the left mouse button I'm also checking for the player unit so I'm gonna put this out and put get and I'm gonna check that these are both true so both and boolean will go into there and then this will go into the position like so but now I can only select those who are player controlled so for example, this one is the only one that's player controlled. Hit play, place this. I can click on him. But I can't click on these guys. Okay. Now you will have to do this for buildings as well. So the buildings, we don't want to see their decal. Um, so I'm going to go over to the decal here and do this for the buildings. Uh, we'll set this to be on building base, the default, the player, uh, player unit, we take that as true by default. So now they shouldn't have their decal ring. Now, if you've got multiple units in your game, uh, like 
other than just zombies you may have like elves or whatever uh, you can rather than do the decal just change the mesh over to a different mesh it's totally up to you you can you can switch that over to that if you want i've only got one army to use so i'm just going to use this method okay um so that will do that for that we've now got a way to identify what enemies can see other enemies next thing i want to do is make it so that these guys can attack now first of all i'm going to focus on just making it so i, I give the command we'll do it with auto attacking later so the command i want to give is when i'm playing the game i click on the soldier I want to be able to right click on a target and for him to go over and attack that target and then eventually that guy will also retaliate um so let's work on that so the first thing we need to do is set up the right click event on that unit base go on here and that's the way so we've got actor on clicked and we're doing the left mouse button. I want to also do a check for the right mouse button. So if this is false, I'm going to go down here and we're going to do a check on here too. So another branch and we're going to check this button here and look for the right mouse. Uh, is mouse button. Wait, not that one. Equals two. That's what I want. And mouse button right. Okay, and that will go into this branch down here. So we are now checking for the right mouse button clicks on the character, and this will happen on here. But it's only happened if we don't click left click first. So we go on here, and we need to basically do what we do with the trees. Now, if I go to my unit tree and look at the right click event on here. Be basically the same process as this, where we're getting the controller, uh, getting unit selection, and then telling the, what to do when it does this. Um, so let's do that. So I'm just going to copy this from here. So I'm going to just copy the player controller, the cast, and the unit selection, and the for each loop. And I'm going to put that on unit base down here. Okay, so now we've got the controller's unit selection. We're going to then tell each of those units to set a blackboard value on each one. So we need to get the blackboard of the uh, controller of this guy. So again, on the tree here, we're getting the blackboard from the AI controller. So we have to get the AI controller to accomplish that. Go back here. From here, get AI controller. And then get blackboard. And go from there and do set value as vector. Okay. And the vector value is going to be the target location. So here is going to be, again, similar to what we've done with the tree, we're going to get the actor location and then random point in that radius. So we're just going to pick that and that back in here too. It works very similarly to the tree. Key name, we're going to make literal and put in target location. Okay. So that's the target location being set, but we also need to set the action. So similar to how the unit tree here, we are doing an action enum. We also need to do that here too. So I'm going to copy this part and put it back on unit base. so a blackboard component being this guy again like so and then this enum value here i want to make a action on here so i make a variable and we'll call it action and this will be of the type of action e e action i'll and we'll set a default of this to attack drag this in get and plug that in so compile and save okay so now we've got the action being set and we've got the location being set i've hit save and compile now so we then want to set up the attack animation stuff so for that we're going to go to the unit base here and we're going to have a custom event in this and i'm going to set up the attack event like this and i'll leave this blank here for now on unit base 
file and on here I also want to have a variable for target actor and this would be an actor class uh, object reference sorry okay and that would do for that so save and we're good so the thing we want to do now is go back to our right click event on here so when I right click on a target what I want to do is tell all my unit classes that I've clicked on which are here unit selection um, I want to set their target actor to be this actor I've clicked on so I'm going to drag from there and do set target actor to be this target so self file and save that so now when I call the attack function we'll know who to attack and who to do damage to but when to call the attack function well what we're going to do is use an animation and on the unit behavior at the moment our attack branch is set to null nothing so from here we're going to do play animation and the animation that gets played here will change per behavior tree so what we're doing here is we're making a base behavior tree and then we'll duplicate it for different types of infantry and remove the parts that don't re aren't required for that infantry uh, for that uh, unit so for example workers do not need to know how to attack so we'll just take that off of them and likewise infantry do not need to know how to do collect resources so we'll take that off of them and so forth okay so you can build it all up like that so on the play animation here we're going to change this to be our um attack or our infantry infantry attack a and hit save so this animation looks like this okay so with that done on our behavior tree we're now going to tell our animation to actually call that attack event so on the animation itself there's a notify track and we're going to add our own custom notifiers to this so let's right click go to blueprint class and search for anim notify and you want this top one here and we'll call this one attack target notify and then we'll go find those animations so on this animation I'm going to add the attack notifier to whenever the animation should attack so about there add notify and do the attack target and notify so this notify will uh, fire off whenever it hits this part of the animation okay and only that part so now let's edit that attack notifier in here we're going to go to functions and override the receive notify this is what fires when it hits that notify in the animation and on here we can then do the apply damage so on the mesh comp I want to get the actor that owns this so if I type in owner this actually returns the actor who owns this component I then want to cast this to our unit base plug that in there and then from here we're going to do attack And that's it you tick the box and that's it compile and save that i'm then going to go to my unit base uh sorry not the unit base to the um infantry actually no we could do it on the unit base actually because they will do exactly the same thing basically uh so on here we'll set up the actual dealing damage part so this gets called whenever that animation plays so on here i'm going to take out the target actor and i want to call the apply damage node the damage actor is going to be the target actor and the base damage is whatever value you want to put in here and for this I want to make this a variable so I can set it per unit so some units can be stronger than others now we've got set up some things on here so the event instigator who is calling this event so on this guy we want to get the controller that's on it so this will actually put in either the player controller or the AI controller it'll take one of them the damage causer is the actor who caused the attack so if you want to make the guy uh, gain aggro uh, and, and get attention from who they're attacking this is what you can use here so for this we'll do self and damage type class will leave us null because we're not using damage type classes here today 
Um, and that's it. Apply damage. You set the damage here to something and do uh, 10, whatever it may be. Okay, so to see if that's working, I'm going to create a damaged event. So event any damage. And I'm just going to make it print string the damage value comes out. So let's test this out. We're going to hit play and place our building. And we'll click on my guy and right click on another one and it'll deal damage. And you can see now the damage is being printed out here. So now the damage is going across just fine. And he'll just keep whacking on him. Or I can change which target it goes to as well, like so. No problem. Okay. So that'll do for this episode. In the next episode, what we're going to do is set up the ability for him to retaliate and attack back, and also to have a little health bar above their head so you can see the damage being done um, and kill them. So join us in the next episode right now over on patreon.com forward slash Ryan Ailey, where your support will get you access to all of my videos before everyone else. And thank you to all my patrons and YouTube members for their continued support. And if you're not already subscribed, hit that subscribe button. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you all next time. Bye, everyone.